Yo, what's good? Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. So, I've been thinking about this whole, uh, the, all the fallout from, from Daniel Dubois' win and, and how it's going to affect the, the, the landscape of boxing. And while I was, you know, bummed out that, that my guy lost and not only did he lose, he got slept. Objectively speaking, I think it's a good thing for the sport of boxing. I think it's good for the script to get ripped up. Um, I, I don't. I, I, I think it's it's. You don't want to get to a situation in the sport where it almost feels like it's a coronation, and to where it's it's, it's not it's not a real sport, where certain guys become so big because they're such big commercial draws that you know it it, it almost seems like like they they were anointed by the media and that and that this has to happen and it has to go this way and this is the story that the media wants that a majority of fans want you know we saw that with Usyk like Usyk ripped up the script with both AJ and Tyson Fury Right. I think I think if you ask the 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 average boxing fan promoter, well, let's not say promoters, but boxing fan and media pundit, you know, how they would have liked the heavyweight division to kind of shape up. It would have been AJ and Wilder fight. Right. They give us. The, the action-packed heavyweight slugfest, two big punchers, right? Somebody's getting knocked out. The winner fights Tyson Fury for Undisputed. And if you're asking most people, they will probably have wished AJ beat Wilder and then AJ fights Tyson Fury for an all-British clash. And the winner is declared the best of this era, right? Simple. Like that's, I think that's what we would have at least liked to have seen. Now, you know, AJ and Wilder will probably never fight each other. Fury and AJ, there's still there's still hope for that fight, but right right now that that fight is dead. That fight is dead unless unless Tyson Fury. Let's say Tyson Fury gets laid out by Usyk, which could happen, which could happen, or just gets beaten up, you know? Would they be able to kind of market that fight as like the battle of like the two old washed up has-beens who both got knocked out by the top guys and are just kind of cashing out like it would be almost like a glorified Kell Brook versus Amir Khan it's like man this fight should have happened four or five years ago now we're getting it when both of these guys are past it they're washed up and they're just looking for one last payday before they retire you know um so right now that that, that market is dead um but when we when we think about the big picture, Daniel Dubois coming in breathes fresh life into the heavyweight division because essentially he is, for lack of a better way of putting it, he's he's taking AJ's soul and he's taking AJ's clout, and it's different than Usyk because Usyk just like he outboxed AJ like comprehensively, conclusively. There's no doubt in my mind that Usyk won both of those fights, right? But he didn't beat AJ down, like, you know? Like, yeah, of course Usyk became a star and, and gained a bunch of clout from beating AJ, but he didn't have that viral, like, oh my God, where were you when this happened? Like, you remember that fight? Like, nobody's gonna go back and rewatch the... AJ Usyk fights like they were they were okay they were okay but they weren't classics either 
they were like just really kind of technical chess matches and Usyk was the better technician and, and beat AJ. Um, but that's both of those fights were like that. They were just two kind of standard kind of chess mas matches, you know? They weren't classics, you know? The way Dubois beat AJ, it wasn't a it wasn't a classic fight, but it was a classic moment, right? Because it wasn't like it was Gotti Ward where like AJ was giving it back to Dubois. It was like AJ landed one good punch and that was it. And right after he landed that good punch, he got knocked out like 15 seconds later. But um, you know, Dubois has he's captured that moment. You know, he got his his viral superstar moment. And he did it against one of the biggest stars in the sport. So in that sense, he kind of prolongs the 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 shelf life of like this heavyweight era because he's kind of while he's young, he's mixed it up with most of the top guys outside of Tyson Fury. Surprise, surprise, Tyson Fury has avoided a lot of top guys, you know, which is why I've never supported Tyson Fury. As good as he is, he's been very selective in who he fights. We'll see if Tyson Fury will fight a Daniel Dubois. Maybe for undisputed, maybe. Or 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 maybe he retires it if he beats Usy. You know? But this, but but the point is sticking to the point, so I don't get sidetracked. Daniel Dubois has shifted the paradigm. You know, it's 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 a it's a new era. You know, it's really his time. It's his time to shine. He's the boss now. Now guys are gonna have to go through him. You know. Um, and I, and I think that it makes it interesting because now we, we're going to get more interesting matchups. Like, let's say Usyk beats Tyson Fury. We could see a rematch with Dubois, but we could also maybe see Usyk go a different route. Maybe Dubois wants to go a different route. You know? There's no, there's no demand that there has to be another undisputed fight immediately. At least not in my mind. I'll say that in my opinion. You know, and I'm probably in the minority. I'm sure most people just want to see undisputed, undisputed, undisputed. But I want to see the best matchups, you know. I don't know if Usyk Dubois is the best matchup, you know. I think Dubois Bacoli would be a fun fight. I think Usyk Bacoli would be a fun fight. I think Bacoli is somebody that could give Usyk a lot of problems. He's big. He punches hard. He's vicious, you know, he's not afraid of getting hit the way, I hate saying it, bro, but AJ looks scared as hell in there in that ring last night, bro. The eyes don't lie, man. He looked fearful, you know? I'm not going to say it was a, a, a pusillanimous um, performance, but... He definitely showed fear, you know. He's not a coward because he didn't go out like a hoe. Like he did go, he go, he went down. Excuse me, he went down swinging, you know. So you have you have to respect that, you know. Um, he fought back to the best of his abilities, but I think that his own physical limitations caused him to hesitate. You know, and uh, that that just can't be denied anymore. You know, but I think a guy like Bacoli, whether it's Usyk, whether it's Dubois, whether it's Tyson Fury, you know, Tyson Fury could win. I'll never say never, because hey, man, Dubois shocked the hell out of me last night. I did not see that coming at all. Um, so could Fury do a similar demolition job on Usyk? Probably not. 
because Usyk is just one he can take a shot and he has a good poker face that's the thing about that AJ he does not have a poker face he's probably a horrible liar you know um So I, I doubt that Tyson Fury will be able to do that to Usyk, but he could win. You know, again, the point is there are all these other matchups that I want to see as a fan that will now be allowed to enjoy. And that's and that's not to say that, like, AJ should be cast aside because, you know, you've had all these other fighters on the Riyadh season promotion. That's basically what it is. Riyadh season is the umbrella, Matchroom, Queensberry. They're all these subsidiaries. That's what it is. It's unofficially official. I mean, I'm sure they're in negotiations for right now. And if you're Eddie Hearn, maybe you do just kind of sell out because who does he have that's like his next star, especially a heavyweight? There's no one. Frank Warren has all the best heavyweights. You know, Eddie Hearn has AJ, whose commercial value literally plummeted by 50%. You know? I said Wembley Arena in my previous video. I meant Wembley Stadium. Um, you know, maybe that's where AJ's gonna be at Wembley, Wembley Arena for his next fight or, you know? AJ's pro might might be might be on the undercard. He might be on the undercard. It might he might be relegated back to the undercard. Um and I don't I don't I mean is it a disgrace? I don't think it's a disgrace. Um depends how he looks at it. Like I mean the problem with AJ is he's just had his whatever was left of his chin because I I mean he, he never had an iron jaw and I never made that argument I didn't think it was that fragile you know to where like he was just getting shaken by jabs you know it was almost like a Mir Khan-esque I hate saying I hate saying that about AJ but that's what I saw man I saw a big six foot six black version of Amir Khan you know, he looked like Klitschko. That's a, yeah, he looked like Klitschko, like just very vulnerable. Somebody who has all the the physical advantages that one would need outside of strength. I don't think AJ is that physically strong. I said that in my previous video. I don't see AJ as somebody that's just like bulldozing guys because I don't think he's like naturally like a super duper heavyweight I don't think he's naturally like 250 I think he's kind of built himself up to that weight um probably because he's always been kind of physically weaker I think he's he's somebody that just has that fast explosive kind of quick twitch muscle you know, you look at Dubois. Dubois, you can tell he has that dense, you know, just kind of caveman, Neanderthal muscle, man, where it's just like, yo, I can't move this dude. That's that's on the outside looking in, you know. And then you look at AJ's waist. It's very slim. His legs aren't big. Um, so he just has that naturally slender kind of frame, so... That's the one physical attribute he doesn't have. Um, but yeah, like Klitschko, it's just like, it's almost like AJ's shocked when somebody gets off on him because he's not used to that. I don't I don't agree with the narrative that he's a flat track bully. You'll hear his detractors say that, like he's an on top fighter. Because you can't call somebody a bully if they're willing in, to get in with like top tier guys. The guys that AJ has faced, Dubois, Usyk, you know, everybody's saying Valine isn't good because AJ made light work of him. But Valine gave Tyson Fury hell. Let's not forget that. Um, you know, Ruiz, Pulev, Povetkin, Dillian White, you know, 
He fought some solid guys, Joseph Parker, right? He's fought some some solid guys. So you can't say he's a bully. I would say that would apply more to Vlad because Vlad feasted on bums for years. You know, Klitschko feasted on, you know, fat cruiserweights and no hopers like Tony the Tiger Thompson, whose best win is a, a, another chinny heavyweight, David Price. Um, but yeah, man, it just it just seems like yeah, AJ doesn't know what to do when he gets hurt. Like he does seem to panic when he gets hurt, you know? And I think it's just, it's a guy who's not used to getting hurt. You know, it's kind of like Klitschko. Like I, I saw an interview where Klitschko said he had never been in a street fight before, you know? Cause it's like a dude that big, like, like if AJ and Klitschko were American, they would have been like the high school jocks, you know, dual sports and basketball, football. Nobody ever stepped to those dudes in high school or very rarely, you know? Like when I was in high school, I remember there was this guy, he was like a, a, a top football player. Like he had gotten a D1 scholarship and he got beat up by like this like skinny, like kind of like weed head dude. Um, right after gym class, like got beat up and you could just see the state of shock on his face because like guys like that are just not used to like being dominated physically, you know? And I think that that's the case. I think like, I don't know what kind of sparring he was having either. It's like the, the sparring with AJ might have been too polite. You might have had guys in there who were just grateful for the opportunity. You know what I mean? You know, um, and they just kind of not take it easy on him, but they wouldn't go in there and try and take his head off. They would go in there and just do the rounds and just be grateful. Like, oh, I can take a picture. I can boost my profile. I could market myself to promoters like, hey, like I've been sparring AJ, like I'm legit, like give me a deal, you know? So, yeah, it's not to say that we should throw AJ away because who knows, man, who knows? But it's, it's difficult for me to envision a scenario where um, it's hard. It's hard. For, it's hard for me to see a bracket that includes AJ, at least as like a top tier contender. Like he would have to take out a lot of guys, you know. And I don't see that happen. I think one of them would have to be Dubois. I didn't. I just don't see that happening. You know. Would he have the confidence to fight a Martin Bacoli? Maybe. Because that's a different fight. Because Martin McCauley doesn't have fast feet. That's what messed AJ up. It was Dubois' feet were a lot faster than he expected. Because AJ doesn't like pressure fighters. Right? Like, you look at the guys AJ's lost to or struggled with. They've all been shorter heavyweights. And they've all put the pressure on them and throwing lots of punches really fast in combinations, right? Martin Bacoli throws good combinations, but he's not gonna press you, right? He's too, he's too fat, his feet are too slow, but he does punch with great fluidity. I've always noticed that about Martin Bacoli. He has really fluid hands for a dude his size, punches very fluidly. More fluidly than AJ. Um, I think the only guy that matches him for fluidity is Fury. And I think he punches his the way he punches, they seem to be more free free flowing than even Usyk's. Usyk is more technically correct, you know. Um 
So maybe he would take that. But you know, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Like all the guys that AJ's had problem with have been small guys that pressured him. Ruiz, right? But he was able to outbox Ruiz because Ruiz has slow feet. I don't think he could pull off that same act against Daniel Dubois because Dubois is going to come at him. He's not going to stand there like a dumbass like Andy Ruiz. Everybody says Dubois is slow, but Andy Ruiz maybe isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. You have the opportunity of a lifetime and you waste it drinking and partying. Like Daniel Dubois was locked in and focused. And now the world is his oyster. This could have been Andy Ruiz. You know, but he ain't want it like that, so that's on him. But uh Yeah, man, it's uh, it's, it's weird, man, but it, I think it's good. As a as 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 a fan, you have to be you can't call yourself a fan of boxing if you're so butt hurt over your favorite fighter losing that you know, you basically act like the sport has died. Like no one should be bigger than the sport. Um and maybe that's why it's so devastating when a certain fighter loses, like a uh, long, dominant champion, multiple title defenses, you know. You know, people build a bond with those guys, especially someone like AJ. He's good looking, he's charming, he's an affable guy. Um, so, of course, he has this connection with the public, but it's a sport, you know. And I love the sport of boxing. There's, I, there's no fighter who I think should be bigger than the sport. There's no fighter who I think should transcend the sport. You know, that's the problem with Canelo Alvarez. See, Canelo doesn't want to end up like AJ. I don't think Canelo, as good as Canelo is, like, I don't think Canelo is as daring as AJ. Like, AJ, obviously, I mean, it metaphorically, like, he's punched above his weight for a very long time. You know? Um, or I guess figuratively, whatever. But, um, he's punched, he's punched up above his weight for a very long time. Like, he's been fighting guys who are better schooled, you know, guys who have way more experience, way more amateur fights, more training, have been, you know, boxing since they were little kids. When AJ didn't start till he was like 18, right? So he was he was already an adult. Um so it's kind of in a sense a miracle that he made it this far without getting knocked out. And when you look at the fact that he was taking tough fights, like he's never ducked tough fights. You know, it was two dudes who yapped their mouths for the longest time who said AJ was ducking them, Wilder and Fury, who created this perception that AJ was, you know, a coward and that he was scared to, to take on challenging fights. We have too much evidence now to, to show that like AJ's was never scared to take tough fights and that he is somebody that's like about that life. Like dude went out on his shield. Um, so I don't even know where I'm going, but I, I guess what I was saying is like, yeah, it, it sucks that, you know, my guy lost, you know, some, some of you probably are AJ fans. That's cool. But at some point, your favorite fighter will lose. If they keep fighting top-tier guys, your favorite fighter will lose, you know? If Usyk keeps fighting top-tier guys, he'll lose, you know? Um, as good as Alexander is, as unbeatable as he's looked, he's still a man, too, you know? If somebody clips him on the jaw, things can happen, bro. It's heavyweight boxing, so... Um, this video's gone on pretty long, but, you know, to just kind of summarize, man, I, I think that Daniel Dubois winning is a good thing for the sport. Um, and we should always embrace change, you know? 
he's kind of he's kind of kicked down the door the door of, of the old guard and is going to usher in these younger heavyweights you know you got a lot of talented guys you got you know big baby anderson he could come back like like dubois did dubois was written off last year look how look how the world can change in one year his entire life has changed you know so big baby anderson he can come back you know you have moses atalma um you know, Hatman was saying that Moses Atalma should fight Dubois. Uh, I don't know, man. I might, I might, like, why, why sacrifice a young prospect? If you're Frank Warren, it does, that fight doesn't make a lot of sense right now. It makes more sense for Dubois to fight Tyson Fury because it's like, if Dubois fights Tyson Fury and chins him, which is a huge possibility, that's a 50-50 fight. If he knocks out Tyson Fury, right, he's got a young, undisputed champion who beat AJ, Philip Hergovich, and Tyson Fury, right? And so now you can send Fury off the pasture. He's old. He can go back to drinking and doing cocaine he doesn't have to box anymore right or if Fury wins again you have an undisputed champ Daniel Dubois is young enough to where he can rebuild again right because he's not even 30 and it cements Tyson Fury's status as the best British heavyweight of this era Right? Because if if Dubois and, and Fury are fighting undisputed, obviously that means Fury beat Usyk. So it's like Fury has two up on AJ. I beat Usyk. I beat Dubois. Both of those guys whooped your ass. So I'm definitely better than you. The point is, there are lots of possibilities. I'm going to shut up. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm out. Peace.